Welcome, everybody. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot. And this is the show where we like to talk about hot penny stocks. And I've got one for you today, folks. More than just the stock, we've got an interview with the CEO of ticker IDKFF. This is 3D Capital. Now, just to give you a little insight, 3D Capital is a holdings company. They do not have any business of their own. They do not make any revenues of their own. What they do is invest in other companies. They invest in companies, not just with their money, but with their support. When those companies make money, they make money. They call uh, 3D Capital the parent company because that's how they act, like a parent. They take care of these subsidiary companies. and. Our CEO here, Sheldon, he is the founder of the company, which is as close as you get to being a parent. Founders, this is their baby. This company is their baby. They gave launch to it. They want to see it succeed. And we're going to get a lot of information today about this company because they are invested into over 70 companies, folks. 70. Now, we're not going to talk about every single one of them. I can't imagine how long that show would be, but we're going to get to as many as we can. We have got some hot new companies here with technology that is going to change the world. We are talking about trillion dollar ideas here, folks. So today we are going to be talking with the CEO. Sheldon, how do you pronounce your last name for me? Uh, just phonetically, in when Tash, just like... Uh... Break, break it up just like the way the the syllables show. And gotcha. So we'll excuse the fact that you've got an R where your T should be on your last name there. Oh, <laughs> did, did I do that? I guess so. Oh, my goodness. No worry. We got oh, the Oh, cow. That's my, that's me. I, I, okay, sorry. It's my, it's my bad. <laughs> We got the spelling right, though, so everybody knows who you really are. Okay. All right. So we are going to talk a lot about your company. We're going to talk a lot about the companies you're invested into. But before we get into that, it is most important that we get to know you and your team. You could have the hottest product in the world. You could have technology that is going to change the world. But if management isn't up to snuff, it doesn't matter. Management can make and break any company. And because you are the founder, I know you've got a soft spot for this company in your heart. So please tell us about how you got to this point with the company, how it got started, and the team you brought along with you. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's a great opportunity to for us to tell our story after, uh, as you said, seven years of being stealth. Yes. Um, I guess the best way uh, that maybe I can summarize who I am, um, I'm a CPA by background, Price Waterhouse sort of accounting. Uh, then I became an analyst. Then I became a, a, a money manager, a portfolio manager at a major Canadian company. Mm -hmm. And then I founded my first companies. Uh, uh, I left that you know big organization. I founded a business in nuclear medicine. Then I started a company called Pine Tree, which is basically, if we call uh, 3D Capital 2.0, Pine Tree was 1.0. Um, I started it, uh, took over a shell company at 12 cents, uh, and did uh, many, many deals similar to the ones that 3D has. Uh, exited the stock at $26, uh, raised Ooh. over $20 billion for our in, um, investee companies, if you will. Um, cross-section of verticals in terms of investment, had many, uh, a number of exits, over a billion dollars, um, including, you know, one to bear, uh, which was in the area of uh, pharmacogenomics, uh, personalized medicine, then uh, also a number of mining exits and so forth. And I basically retired. Um, then my son, Jackson, who is, uh, you know, my 2YC, if you will, and uh, wanted to get into this business and we decided that we're going to start anew with uh, what became 3D Capital. Mm -hmm. So we've been basically stealth for, you know, seven years, uh, put in about 70 different companies, have not had done a financing in five years. So all the uh, investments that we have made have been a result of companies that we built, we sold and we reinvested. Yeah. Um, but now, through the cycle of that time, our our sweet spot is getting involved 
at the get go of these companies from the ground floor. So it's it's a it's a it's a journey that takes years. There's no fast solution to it. And the time that's passed now has resulted in 2024 being set for it to be our breakout year. In other words, all the companies that we really spent all the time and effort and we advise as well. So we are almost part of management of these companies. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the year that many, many of our companies are commercializing. So that, in essence, is why I want to tell the story now. I'm not promising. We're delivering. And I say that to everybody when we talk about these stocks. A lot of stocks on the OC tell us what they plan on doing, but when you look close, they're not doing anything. They just keep talking about doing something. And your company has got so many companies, 70 of them right now. And I was looking, a lot of them are right on the cusp of launching right now. I even heard you mention that some of these companies are being considered to spin out this year as well. Yes, yeah, so we have we have so many different business models here. Uh, but one of the things that you said earlier is that, you know, we don't have an operating business in the company. We're mainly just invested. Well, mm -hmm. this year we plan on launching two operating businesses, uh, both related to the area of AI compute mm -hmm. and in micropayments. And I'm happy as we get into going down the rabbit hole of, of selectively talking about some of them, not to overwhelm people. Uh, right. I'm happy to explain those business models. So we expect not just to trade as a, as a holding company, but we are going to become potentially a quasi operating company. Outstanding. I mean, that's a lot of extra potential there. Well, let's jump into it. You've already started to talk about uh, TotoQ. I would like to talk about TotoQ. They've got some technology that you have a hold of that I believe is going to change the world. And looking at your company right now, I think is a perfect time. You may be an OTC company, but you are blue chip stock. You are going to build this up to a huge corporation. And the technologies of TotoQ, I think they're going to be your flagship products. You've got a lot of hot ones, but this is hot. So tell us about the two ideas that are coming from TotoQ right now and how you're going to use them with another company as well. Yeah, so the way that I like to talk about, you know, I've never in my career, and I probably back more than a thousand companies, I've never used the word in my life, trillion dollar company. And really up until the last <laughs> five years, no one else did either. Uh, right. But now we've, we've got a few companies that have crossed into that category. Well, <laughs> I believe that we do have two. And they're all based on a protocol that we backed seven years ago called TODA. And TODA is a layer zero protocol that's blockchain-like, but it's not blockchain. The limitations of blockchain is, is through the consensus mechanism, it's slow. You can't go fast because everybody's got to kind of chime into this decentralized transaction. Mm -hmm. So it and 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 the costs can be quite prohibitive. So TODA TODA has um, the ability to have no limit on scalability. So you can do as many transactions as your enterprise wants to do in real time. That is a breakthrough moment. In addition, the cost per transaction of processing a tra transaction is fractions of a penny. So this protocol has many layers and 3D is invested in all the layers of this tech stack. But the two end products call it, or businesses, mm -hmm. are two things. One is called hypercycle, and yeah. hypercycle is a marriage of singularity, which is Ben Gertzel's AI, AGI potential company, where he wanted to create the global brain through AI. And as we all know, AI is growing at approximately 400% a year. Nothing in our lifetime has ever met that type of growth. That's right. And with no stop in sight. So his dream was to build a scalable AI technology using singularity. He started on Cardano, but it just was it just couldn't process fast enough. He discovered Toda and Toda is now the platform with singularity together that they call hypercycle. 
hypercycle objective, imagine this, and this is a big, big phrase I'm going to say, is creating the internet of AI. It's allowing all AI systems to communicate with each other and become smarter. And it's fully decentralized. So the problems with AI today is that whether it's OpenAI, Anthropic or others, is it's not truly decentralized. So you can get wow. a Putin, a Putin control AI, and he has said this, whoever controls AI controls the world. This is problematic. <laughs> Hypercycle yeah. in its process and protocol is totally decentralized. So no one can control the whole network. Mm -hmm. But by being involved in Hypercycle, you're facilitating the internet of AI and helping companies create compute power, which is basically in short supply. That is the headwind and solves a lot of the problems of where AI needs to grow. So we believe that is a killer, killer app. We believe it's a multi-trillion dollar opportunity and it's launching in the second half of this year. Wow. Wow. That's just mind boggling on uh, Internet for AIs that we're going to be able to make use of. I mean, yes. I can't, I just can't imagine what that is going to be. All these AIs are in little cubicles. They're, they're all being controlled by their owners, their masters, and exactly. they don't get much exposure out there, especially with each other. So to bring a host of AIs together in one area where they can commune, they, they can work together. Hopefully they don't conspire. <laughs> I mean, really, honestly, it is unknown the potential that something like this could have. I think it could put our internet as we know it right now into the trash can. It has yeah. it, become obsolete, old fashioned. Well, you know, in the future, the belief is that 99.9% .9 of all transactions are gonna be under the hood. They're gonna be machine to machine. So there's gonna be algorithmic uh, communications amongst them all, whether you're buying something, selling something, uh, accumulating something, doing this task, doing that task. That's why you need the internet of AI. Yes, we will all interact with large language models like ChatGDP, but that is that's sort of like minute compared to the trillions of transactions that that governments are going to do, institutions, yeah. banks, and so forth, amongst their, all their uh, constituents. So that's why we believe this is about as big an idea that I've ever seen in my life. The the backdrop so, so of that actually that segues you into their other idea, yeah. the the micro payments. Yes. So ex exactly, and and just to say, um, the hypercycle community has been working on this for 30 years. This is not someone who came up with a unique idea and, well, we're just going to take over the world. So there's a lot of thought. There's a lot of expertise in, in the AI uh, 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 protocol and, and systems integration here that should not be understated. The right. second killer app, as I call it, that has come off the TOTA protocol, again, the same blockchain-like protocol, yeah. is TOTA Q. And Tota Q is going to have many, many different verticals. The first one that they're launching is in micropayments. So what they've done is they're democratizing the payments industry. And what I mean by that is six billion, <coughs> excuse me, of eight billion people on planet Earth cannot afford a subscription model. Like they can't afford 9.99, 19.99, Netflix, Spotify, you name it all the streaming uh, services, sports, right. etc. Most people only can afford a transaction at a time. So guess what? I want to listen to a piece of music and I want to spend two cents. Well, impossible. I want to watch a video game. I want to play a video game for five minutes. I'll pay eight cents. None of this is divisible today because to do a transaction on a KYC verification, third party processing costs can be 50 cents to a dollar per transaction. Yeah, a lot of middlemen, a lot of work being all done by other divisions. All over. So, what Tota Q now is going to allow is that there is no bottom limit per transaction. So, I'll give you one application with another one of our companies. 
Okay. We have, so I run a, like an incubator uh, accelerator out of my office. And what I love to do is create partnerships amongst my startups because that's the way they can scale quickly. Yeah. Time to market issues are reduced and capital is reduced. So right. we have a company that's working on getting FDA approval on a wearable device to take your own blood pressure. There is none today that is FDA approved. They might have something, but it's not accurate. So they've created this uh, software AI system that goes in a wearable and the wearable could be an Apple watch. The wearable can be, they have their own device, but they're not a hardware company. They're a software AI company. So now you're, you, you have this, you know, device and you have a predisposition. And by the way, blood pressure is, is one of the biggest precursors of heart attacks and hypertension yeah. and all kinds of issues that are health related that if you're not on top of it, your health can decline. So yeah. <clears throat> they want to do it where they don't want a subscription model because it's tough to get people to spend even $5.99 a month, whatever. People don't want to do that. And in many cases, they can't afford it. Well, in the worst part, part is, is that it's difficult to stop. They make it easy to start. But if you right, want to exactly. a subscription, it just goes on and on. I, and I don't want to be locked into anything. I and people forget that they're paying. So, um, yeah. but th this, the case in point I want to make here is that the company with the blood pressure is basically saying to people, every time you want to take your blood, we're not going to charge you a monthly fee. Every time you take your blood pressure, <coughs> you have to pay one penny. That was totally impossible before. Toda Q and this company, both portfolio companies are ours called AIML, have done a partnership now and they've done, they've announced it. So now the wearable company can charge a penny per transaction and make a profit. And not only that, Toda Q can make a profit. So if you can do something at a penny, well, let's say you're in India and you have a, a you have a, a smartphone and you want to play a video game for five minutes and you have 12 rupees. That's all you have, but you want to do that. You can't right. do that today you, because they can't afford an Activision subscription. They can't afford to buy Fortnite, the video game. Call of Duty, they can't afford any of that. It's a barrier, but they'll spend 12 cents on playing something for five minutes. Now they can do that. Think of Netflix. Netflix has what they call the long tail of content where they have all this content that they've had for a long time. And someone does not want to subscribe to Netflix, but they want to watch the movie Easy Rider from 1968 Netflix controls the conflict and guess what? They they don't want to do a Netflix sub subscription, but they'll pay 25 cents to watch that movie. Netflix current business model doesn't allow that. So now Netflix, for example, can have access to 6 billion people on planet Earth that uh, want to just do one time usage transactions. Sure. Young people today don't even have credit cards. They just want to they want to have user fee basis. You're a researcher. You want one article for your research, but you don't want to subscribe to the New England uh, Journal magazine, uh, Medicine. You don't want to subscribe to, Na subscribe to Nature or the different periodicals. You want that one article, and you'll pay 50 cents for it. You don't want to pay $29.99 a month. You right. can now do that. So in the music industry, young artists today uh, can't make a living, but they want to release a song and say, you want to listen to my song, pay two cents. And, and basically um, now that's possible. So the creator economy can make money where never before they could. And that is the brilliance yeah. of Toyota Q. Uh, Google has recognized it. CBC and CIBC in Canada are part of the launch. There's another top five tech company in the world doing a bear hug going, this is going to change our business model for sports streaming. Someone can watch a one inning of a baseball game. They don't want to watch the rest. None of that was <laughs> visible and fractionalizable. So we believe this is a trillion dollar idea. Right. It's now, like going into the store and wanting to buy a candy bar, but you don't want to spend two bucks for it. But they don't sell a little slice of that candy bar. Exactly. What do you have in your pocket? You can just buy what you can afford, what you want. Bingo. You want one piece of gum. You don't want the whole package. I just want one yeah. piece of gum. I seen that you had an example in one of the shows because I watched all these videos. Folks, I got to tell you, 
You want to do due diligence on this company. The best place to do it is on Twitter, on the company's web uh, account, and also on Sheldon's account. They There are so many news presses with all the companies that they're invested in, they can't put them all on their OTC site. They can't keep all that information, but they do put it on the Twitter account, which is where I did most of my due diligence. And you have just got so many companies you're working with right now. And TD uh, TotaQ has got some of the hottest products mixing with a lot of your other companies right now. I like the fact where I, as an influencer, could actually show you the first 30 seconds of my video. And if you want to watch the rest, pay me 20 cents and you can watch the rest of my video. That is like 20 times more than Google pays me per view. So I can see how opening the door to getting a little from a lot of people is better than getting a lot of nothing from all the people. This just opens up an entire new revenue source that it's like those half pennies you get from the gas. You know, $4.99.9. Well, who gets that leftover fraction of a penny? Does it even add up to anything? Oh, my God. They're making millions and billions of dollars off of throwing away partial pennies. So it does add up. Yeah, the greatest businesses of all time are paradigm shifts, uh, disrupt, disruptive, hiding in plain sight, uh, technology uh, innovation. And, uh, you know, we believe... Exactly. If we can grab a, a fraction of a penny from a billion people every day, that's a lot of money. And those types of businesses trade at the biggest multiples to any other because no one customer can withdraw and, and destroy your business. You're dealing with right. the public, if you will. And the, the, the other thing, just to uh, uh, talk to where the content is with us, <clears throat> I'd never done this before, but we actually have a YouTube channel. And if, if you go to our website and in the media section and we're interviewing. So I'm here as the messenger. I'm talking about all our companies, all our children. I'm the parent. I love all these children. But guess what? All the children are being interviewed on their own on our channel. So uh, we can you can listen to my representation, but you can actually uh, listen to them. Uh, the horse's mouth, if you will. Yes, I was on your Twitter site and you have uh, an influencer that has been doing all of your videos here in, in the last while. And uh, let me see, I think I can actually bring this up for you. And you have lots of interviews actually with each company that you're working with, which Correct. I thought was just excellent. You got to talk to the CEO of Avacana. You got to talk to the CTO of Blockstation. It was just on and on and on, uh, Griffin. I loved it. It, it. it was the best information I have ever found. You may do and do diligence real easy by putting all that information on your Twitter account. So you've got a lot of other companies here. Which one would you like to talk about next? I can pull one out of the hair if you want me to. Yeah, well, there's um, so we're continuing to add these interviews almost on a weekly basis. And one of the recent ones we did is a, is a very exciting uh, concept, but now a reality. Um, it's a company called Neurable, and Neurable's tied in with Harvard University. So the founder and CEO, who we consider to be an excellent business person, but an, an excellent person as well, um, has, has done his first interview almost like he's been stealth as well. So what the technology is, is being commercialized as we speak this summer. We've just ordered a commercial product. I'm going to talk about that. So again, I'm not talking about what we are doing R&D on to change the world. I'm talking about we're changing the world now. In other words, yes. it's proof of concept, but more than that, we are commercializing. I'm yes. not arm waving that, wow, listen. And yes, do I have a good track record? I have an extremely good track record. Yes, but I'm do. saying, don't, don't trust what I say I'm gonna do, trust what I'm doing. So in this particular case, this is technology that's been worked on for 13 years, starting at the University of Michigan. And it's an AI company that basically you may, well, let me give a name of a company that most people know, Elon Musk's Neuralink. So right. people know about that, very invasive, problematic. We are launching a product that is not invasive. We take any headphone, 
okay, any headphone. And in it, we embed our technology, which is AI. Through that AI, if you're wearing the headset and you're thinking, um, I'm going to change that p the page on that PowerPoint, it changes it for you. I want to change the music on the channel. It changes it for you. So let's think of who this could really help. Quadriplegics or people that, that, yeah. that can't use their body anymore that are just using yeah. their mind. And it's based on electromagnetic waves. Wow. But this is the tip of the iceberg. The product that we're launching right now, and so we, uh, we've just ordered these headsets, tells you because it reads your pulses of your brain when you start to lose focus. So for example, you've asked me a question and then I'm starting, but I've been talking about one thing. Now you're asking me to go here and now I have to go back. Like, you know, as just like humans are, we're always, right. we're always distracted and think of other things. The headphones, the AI says, Sheldon, refocus on what you were talking about. Bra -bra. It's sort of, it almost, so what we're talking about here, what I believe ultimately is eliminating cognitive decline. And we believe that ultimately we are going to have uh, detect early signs of, 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 of mental health illnesses like dementia, like Parkinson's and so forth. This is AI interfaced with your brain. So we're very excited about this. I can't say what and who, but there are headset manufacturers in the world, I believe, that are probably going to embed this technology in all their headphones. So how many headphones are in the world? I don't know. But, um, uh, you know, we, we believe this is very, listen, we all care probably of the organ in our body we probably care the most about is our brain, right? You know, right. other things can decline and we got drugs and other things, but the brain is your existence, it's your soul. So we, we've we been investing in this from the get-go. Every round, we've invested in it. Um, we help the company, we're helping them create partnerships. So again, that's what we do. We don't just throw a dart against the wall and go, oh, I hope this works. We, it, we, help, we try to help them. I got a lot of scars in my back on projects that were disappointed in the past. I want to I want to impart my knowledge just to help them not make some of the mistakes that I've made in the past. So we work with these companies to bring them ahead. So we're value added. So what does 3D do? 3D allows the average investor to invest in a company that has a broad range of, of different companies where the investment is at the ground floor so the downside is limited, but management adds, helps add the value on top of that. So A, you're not, you're not going to get exposure to the companies we invest in because it's very hard unless you're a venture capitalist to get there. Second, we negotiate the best possible deal, and then we help those companies make successes of them. So for those that really want to invest in the most disruptive areas today, and I've talked about AI. I can I can talk about many other companies. Uh, we Good. believe AI is the most profound, prolific investment vertical of our lifetime. But we also have other other ventures that that we can certainly get into. But I'll take your lead, AJ, because I'm talking a bit much. No, that's okay. That's why I got you on the show so that you can do all the talking. You know what we're talking about. Yes, you do have a lot of AI. I noticed uh, just before we came on today, I found another company. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're invested into Phoebe AI? Yes, we're invested. Actually, we have two companies in Vancouver. One's Phoebe AI, which is kind of smart wallets. But the other AI company I'd like to talk about is a company called Infinity AI. And Infinity AI, basically, again, this is a multi-year project, not today. Um, manages smart cities, sewage and water. So today, all municipalities and governments are essentially broke. There's not enough tax money to right. support uh, increased population, increased usage. So the best way to squeeze uh, value out of the assets that these, you know, we're talking here, infrastructural assets that these municipalities have 
is through making sure that they're managed in the most efficient way. Because there's massive right. amounts of waste in water and, and, and redundancies. So mm -hmm. this company has a system which is, you know, based on what's called time series data, where they help these cities manage it through AI to become much more efficient. And they've, they're winning contract after contract of many cities uh, in, in North America. They're going international. They actually could probably be profitable in the next six months, but it's better they grow the business rather than be profitable. And all their business is mostly based on monthly recurring revenue. So they, once they get a customer, it's a long life contract and they typically upsell and increase the the, the foundation of what's, what what they're doing. Uh, they don't have to resell and resell, and therefore their their margins are like ninety percent right. at that time. So that's another very interesting macro kind of IA. So uh, what you're company. talking about there is this AI program, this technology helping cities with their water and sewage facilities. Yes. Um, just managing all that infrastructure in the most efficient right. way possible. Because the cities are growing, they're getting more waste, but they can't increase the size of the facility. They can't yeah. make it any bigger. So they've got to work with what they've got. And the only way you can really do that is, as you said, make it more efficient. And I guess they're working with a lot of cameras and stuff from what I was reading. Yeah, it's, there, it's a very fully integrated system. And they're also partnered with some of the biggest resellers in the world, like Akon and so forth, that embed their solution into billion dollar contracts. So, you know, we've been selected for, for every time there's a competitive bid, we win it in many cases, uh, because, you know, we're, our, our technology is superior to everyone else. So when these big, big conglomerates uh, are, are building massive infrastructure projects, and they need this as part of their solution, um, they select us. So it's it's really uh, a, a very strong endorsement of our technology. So you've got AI tapped and you've got some very serious products coming out of AI, not just chat, not just artwork. You know, you've got some serious paradigm shifts coming. That is exciting. But you're diversified. You're not just into AI, you're into mining, you're into medications, health and well-being. So let's take a look at some of those other companies. You do have mining companies. I'm not talking about digital mining as in Bitcoin, though you used to have one. You just sold it. Griffin, was it? Yes. Right. So are you doing any digital mining anymore of Bitcoin or anything? No. We're no. not. After the halving, we, we don't think the economics... Um, are that robust. That's what I thought too. We, there's just less of them to be mined now. You're getting less and they're, it's costing the same to do less. So but, yeah, I kind of thought that too. But what I can say is that we have a few digital asset companies that we invested in a few years ago that are doing their IPOs in the next six months. One of them we right. believe is going to be a, the registered equivalent of bit of Binance. In other words, they've created a digital exchange out of Dubai, a company that does hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue a year, but they wanted to get into the digital vertical and many, many of it being through, through algorithmic products like FinTech type products where institutions can hedge against currencies and so forth using digital right. assets. And they're they're launching here in the next. We believe uh, so. We are uh, we are a fa uh, not a founder, but we've invested in the founding round. So we've invested in pennies. But what is making them quite interesting is they have gotten all the the requisite licenses to do their business and being approved by all regulators. So we believe that they may be the go-to company. And Binance is a multi-multi-billion-dollar company, but this company is going to be much more acceptable to institutions in the conventional world because they're regulated. So we have a number of companies like that that we invested in three, four years ago that are doing their IPOs this year in the digital space. This year. All right. This so year. we got a lot of catalysts coming up here. Many, many. Many. All in this year. I mean, there's more down the road, but, you know, for day traders, they're looking for close catalysts. And I, you know, 
I am a day trader, but this company is one of those companies I wouldn't want to sell on the first, second bounce. I get a feeling looking at your track record, you can take a stock from eight cents to $26. You don't want to get out too soon. Oh my yeah. God, a little bit of patience can pay off very, very well. Yeah, because when we invest, you know, I know it sounds crazy, but be, buying, we, I've, I have a saying that money's made in the buying. So we like to invest at a very, very low valuation. And if we don't see a 50 to 100 X on our investment, we don't do it. So another area that we're quite um, involved in and Jackson, uh, my son who works with me is, is pretty well an expert in is in the area of longevity. We have three companies in California, two which we believe have cracked the code on extending health span, not lifespan. So in other words, how do you live longer but fully healthily? And one of the key hallmarks of aging is what you call the epigenetic clock, where Dr. Horvath in California discovered that in your cellular molecular makeup, you have what's called a biological age. And it's possible, like a software program, to tell that biological age, that cell, that you're not this age, you're that age. So for example, when you're 75 years old, your heart doesn't wear out. You're, 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 you, you, the commands of your DNA say, 75, ah, you've been working long enough, time to retire, stop working. So we, we don't know, but it's sort of, that's why age, you know, you can stand, extend age, but a certain amount. Now, right. the ability is, that you can give information into your cellular structure to say to your heart, for example, you're not 75, you're 45. So sure. one, of our, one of our companies in the Bay Area has the longest living rat in human history, where we took the blood plasma of a young rat, interfaced it into the, an old rat, and the old rat became younger. Through many, uh, there's, there's many ways of looking at it. Their grip strength, how long they can hang on a bar and so forth, um, <laughs> and their body. So this is a massive breakthrough. It got written up in a major uh, uh, journal. And now it's moving towards commerciality, you know, going into humans, uh, going into animals and so forth. So, Which company is this? Is this Turn Biotechnologies? No, it's actually a stealth company that I'm not allowed to disclose at this time, but okay. I will be able to in the next six months. They just hired a world-class CEO who just came off a multi-billion dollar exit in the pharma space, and he's top grade. They're, they're negotiating with the best VC in the U.S. in biotech to get involved. So once these milestones occur, it's going to become public. And we'll be able to talk about it in a forth, more forthcoming fashion. And I'm going to get the CEO and the founder to be interviewed. Fantastic. Oh, I love that. A little bit of a tease. It's stealth, but it's coming. <laughs> it's like yeah. Christmas. The gifts will be under there. You just don't know what they are yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I can talk about another company. Um, okay. That's in the medical space, if you will. Um, yes, please. It's a, a company that you sort of briefly mentioned called Avicana. Yeah. And what I like about Avicana is I might have mentioned in in my in the start that I've done some work in the biotech space. For example, you know, pharmacogenomics, which became personalized medicine. So you know, I've done a lot, you know, quite successfully uh, in, in in that vertical. Um, so it's a company that you know, people think is a medical cannabis company, but it's not. Right. It's a pharma grade drug company using CBD and THC in proprietary formulations to right. actually solve medical, um, you know, diseases. Right. And they have been getting partnership after partnership. And the company is so undervalued, but I believe that it's all going to change this year. Uh, they did a transformational acquisition last year where they bought from a major drug dr uh, drugstore company, Shoppers Drug Mart in Canada. They bought their whole uh, portal, online portal. So they're doing about $3 million a month. Um, they're about to become profitable, I believe. And they just got their first drug approved. So uh, this is a company that we've, we've been very high on. 
uh, and end the space, you know, everybody, all the hype that went into, let's call it uh, the cannabis uh, sector, they were all the hares. We were the tortoise because everything we did involved clinical trials and science. Right. Right. Everybody else calls medical cannabis. Oh, we have CBD in it. it it's going to make you feel better. Right. Well, that's very generic. Yes. No, we have proprietary formulations. And and one of them is, you know, solving or helping the problem, for example, of epilepsy. So these are real, um, real uh, medical issues, uh, diseases that need addressing. And the solutions out there are either very expensive or very inefficient. So so it's it's a company that's addressing a worldwide market. They're in 20 countries. And so, again, it's this, it's another seven year battle because, you know, it takes a lot of capital and a lot of time to help build these companies before you get into the winner's circle. But such is such is the nature of our business. And, and again, another company that has been head down building their business. And I believe that this is their year. Did you say Avicana has an FDA approved drug now? It's approved in 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 Latin America. Okay. They have they have not come to the US yet because the US still um, considers, you know, you have federal and you have state and the federal still have not decriminalized right. it. But states are doing it. So it's too complicated a market until the regulatory, let's call it uh, uh, political regime uh, realizes that, uh, guess what? Um, THC and CBD are not, you know, dangerous ab substance abuse. Yeah, the DEA has to reschedule it. That's all they ought to change. Yeah. Now, now I do know that it was a few years ago, I forget the ticker, somebody did come out with an epilepsy drug that was made with CBDs. It was yes. approved by the FDA. So, now, about eight years down the road, they've discovered there are some side effects with this. There yeah. is over... Let me, uh, yeah, let me give you another analysis. So you're 100% right. The company was called GW Pharma. And yes. so GW Pharma had a pretty simple formulation, but they got FDA approval. Yep. And, you know, I think if I recall... It costs twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year, so it's very expensive. But that company sold, I believe, for eight billion dollars. Avicana just got approval on a generic version of that, where the cost is sub a thousand dollars. So that is why they feel um, that they they are going to be able to address. A lot of the market where people just can't, the affordability is just not there. So that's why uh, we're very high on it because that market is very established. And if you have a generic version that solves the same problem with less side effects, by the way, we believe that's, that could be a blockbuster. Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember when GPH hit that and they got the FDA approval, the stock was under 10 bucks, I think, at the time. And I yeah. mean, it shot, it shot up over a hundred bucks and it just went nuts and you never saw it again. It just didn't come back home. Yeah. And as I said, down the road, they did find some side effects uh, by taking it orally. There was a uh, toxification in the liver and hopefully that's one of the things they addressed and have fixed now. Yeah. Now, so now moving on, I heard you are also involved with medicinal marijuana and you are also working with a company that works with psilocybin, MDA, uh, uh, LSD, correct? That's Lopos? Lopos, yes. Uh, that's peyote. Wow. And in, in Canada, peyote is legal. So <laughs> this is not something that needs approval. And not only that, they can sell it to natives and so forth. So we just did that transaction. We're extremely uh, excited about it. Uh, in fact, I'm doing a site visit here in two weeks and they're planting their first 3000 seeds. And we believe the potential there is, you know, we believe that's a 50 bagger for us. Yeah, I, I've told everybody when it comes down to comparing cannabis sector to the psychedelic sector, which had a much later start. As far as I'm concerned, psychedelic sector is going to blow the cannabis sector away, primarily because cannabis is a cheap medicine psychedelics are cheap to make 
it can sell molecules for $100, where you've got to sell an ounce for $100. So I think psychedelics, and, and they have a lot of evidence to show it is psychologically helping people with trauma, with PTSD, with alcoholism, all sorts of psychological problems, which is a lot better than talking to somebody for 20 years and getting nowhere. Yeah, the ev a lot of the evidence-based uh, work is, is extremely positive, and uh, we happen to be extremely positive on this space. Um, with some of the other uh, 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 psychedelic drugs, unfortunately, they need the approvals that, that are not out there yet, but, 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 but we have it with peyote. Now, what company is it that is actually selling medicinal marijuana? Well, it's Avicana. Echo, stop. There's our break right there. Uh, we didn't tell all you folks, but me and Sheldon here talked about it. We knew we were going to have a lot of information. We knew this was going to be longer than an hour. So right now we've got 45 minutes into this. And though this may be a weird place to actually stop, we're going to stop this first part right here. And we're just going to continue on with part two. So don't go anywhere. Just Hit the next video and watch it. We'll see you in a few minutes, folks. Thank you.